a door-to-door -door rep who thinks, oh, well, I sold 500 accounts, I can go and start my company. You have to understand you're going to be competing with multi-hundred million dollar companies who are able to forego cash flow for two or three years because they already have the cash from playing the long game of you know five to 10 years. Part of our model when we go into a new market is turn on the door to door for two to three years and try and get like an establishment in the area. It's a really good like shot in the arm of new customers. Welcome to the Premium Mindset, the weekly podcast where homegrown entrepreneurs and business owners, Evan Ritchie and Cameron Bodden share the good, the bad and the ugly of modern entrepreneurship and reveal what really happens behind the scenes of their personal and professional lives. As owners of two of America's fastest growing and most disruptive companies, Coconut Cleaning and Green Mango Pest Control. Stay tuned for real stories, struggles, insight and advice from real entrepreneurs and real time. Let's talk about the evolution of door to door industry, because I feel like, you know, it's this common stereotype that a lot of people in the LDS world end up doing door knocking. And that's probably true. However, the, I guess the, the same rate at which other marketing costs have gone up through other channels of marketing TV, radio, advertisement, I'm sure commercials 20 years ago are a lot less expensive than they are now, right? Yeah. And I feel like the door-to-door -door industry, I feel like you probably get asked this more often, but people ask, how do you guys constantly evolve and get more from your current marketing channels, like the silos of marketing, but also uh, have you tried door-to-door? -door? Have you tried doing something like that to generate new customers? And I feel like what people don't know if they haven't been in it is that the amount you have to pay per account sold now more than ever is double, if not triple what it was just 15 years ago. To the rep you're talking about. To the individual <laughs> rep who generates the sale. Yeah. And so your ability to cash flow off those accounts is going to be kicked down the, you know, the road. I feel like a year or two longer than what it was because 15 years ago, it was like 20%, 15%. I have people. I, so my cousin still does door to door for another uh, larger pest control company. What? Yeah. Who? The company? No. Who's your cousin? Jordan. His name's uh, yeah Jordan. Have I met him? No. Okay. He's just one of those kids that like he's been door to door knocking for like nine years. Yeah. And uh, just a I, lifer. Yes. And he's he's around like fifty percent. And he's like, dude, I only sell like 200, 300 accounts every summer. But that's really low. Right. But that's what I'm saying is that he is not a high perform. Oh, he's not a high guy, performer. Man. Right. After nine years. These guys are, these, these guys, guys are, are getting 70, 80, 90% of the account. And it's, it's insane. And so, um, I feel, again, I feel like you probably been asked it more the first, what, three, four years of Green Mango. You guys did door, door, six, door. Well, yeah. Full five six years. years. Yeah. Well, I knocked doors for six years. Okay. So I mean, did what you is your, three? uh, I did three summers. Three. So if someone comes up to you and says, hey, Cam, I know that there's a lot of different you know, ways in which people can do it. But for the most part, what's your general consensus about door-to-door -door being implemented as a new marketing? It's extremely difficult. And the people that talk to me about it, and this is why I wanted to talk about it today, is that the door-to-door -door world is really scary and not many people know about it like it's big on the west coast here but a lot of people on the east coast have those businesses like it's pretty foreign still right but for us it's like everyone knows about it i was on a on a harley ride last week and no offense to this rep this guy that was telling me but like he's the last person that i thought would be like door-to-door -door. he's a mechanic like i wouldn't say the best communication skills but he's like yeah i did three summers i did like 700 accounts i was like what you know so like everyone really if you're on the west coast you're you know you're a member of the church like you're probably going to get recruited right right and whether you do it for one summer or four summers or three summers i don't know but you're probably going to do it for one but the people that like hear about and listen to podcasts like us that run door-to-door -door programs are like, oh, that sounds enticing. Like, that sounds really good. Like, I only pay if the account actually gets sold. And 
maybe because we weren't the best at door to door programs. Like we really weren't. Be, and I think a lot of it is because we were just running around trying to juggle everything. Like if you're going to run a door to door program, you need that one sales manager. Like that's all right. he does. Cause it is literally a full time job of recruiting guys, keeping guys happy, training them, getting good, you know, hood. It was so funny. And I'll go off on a little tangent here. James, my buddy knocked mm-hmm. for Van Oaks and they sold alarms one summer. And uh, James is like, man, if you wouldn't have put us in that hood. And Van's like, are we really talking about hood 15 years later? And that, like, it just made me laugh so much because if you've done door to door, you know, yeah. like, and you've complained about bad hood. Like, yeah. you don't put me in that bad hood. Or like, you've asked for for new hood all the time. Um, I sold it. I sold it in Baltimore for two summers. <laughs> Baltimore. So how many times did you complain about hood or other people complain about hood? I don't They're think like, I complained because that's just what it, that's what it was. Like it was all just a hood. So anyways, what, so when people ask me about the door to door model, I literally kind of get a pit in my stomach. I'm like, dude, you don't want to go down that road. Right. Because it's just, you're going to get, you're, you're going to get burned. Like no matter how you slice it, especially if you're a new guy that's never worked for another company, if you are going to do door to door, you've had to work for someone else. You need to know how the program like really works. And, you know, so if, if you've done a program before and you've been a part of it, I think your chances of success will exceed, you know, have a higher return on it. But if you've never done it, I would probably try and talk you out of it because you're not going to understand the attrition of those accounts. You're not going to understand how salesmen will burn through area. You're not, they're going to burn through customers. They're going to put on crappy accounts and that's where you can get really hurt quickly on a door to door model. And if you've never (laughs) ran it before, like these salesmen are good. They're going to like, they know the tips and tricks to, to, you know, get past you as the owner. Right. Well, let's, let's talk about why people would want to go down that route. So in marketing, I've become familiar with the term call to action, right? Call to action is pretty much the invitation you're giving through any marketing promotion to act now. And six years ago, Coconut did a Diamondbacks deal, right? And I think the issue that we discovered after the Diamondbacks deal is that, okay, we can we can promote and we can get exposure, but no one's going to call us at 7.30 p.m., two beers and two hot dogs down after they see our promotion. And our right? office isn't even open. Right. So like billboards and those kind of things are the farthest marketing source from getting quick call to action. And so I think the reason that door knocking is enticing for a lot of people is there's this like idea that I can immediately get myself or a guy out there. And if I can get him selling for sure two to five a day, I, I have two to five accounts coming in per day. However, when you go down this route of door knocking, the amount that you're paying for, for, in my opinion, the poor attrition that you're going to have just is not worth it. There was a time for coconut where I did door knocking myself, but I wasn't paying myself. Mm -hmm. I would go knock on a door after my route was complete. So again, small business owners out there, there are no excuses for not growing yourself when it is your, your business is that if my day ended at 12, again, we joke, but there was that one day I came back to the office at like probably one, literally to use the restroom. And your guys' first thing is like, why are you here, right? But the the full story is, is why are you here? You could be generous. The full story is I had diarrhea. Because I I had QT breakfast. No, but (laughs) um, like the, the full context of that story is like, you could literally end your day at one, or you can go out and generate two more customers through just knocking on doors. So if you want quick call to action, I understand that it's enticing to do door to door. However, there are plenty of other channels of marketing, silos of marketing that you can put a lot less, uh, you know, as far as like liability into and get a equal return without having to worry about some guy, you know, peeing on a neighborhood street. We have all the, everyone has the stories. If that sounds weird, like that stuff happens is people, you know, they, they do weird things. They get neighborhoods to call in because a guy just looks weird and sketchy and you don't have the best reputation. I don't know if this is a side note, but that's wasn't there like a news story where like Dusty, wasn't it like the dust or something? Did that have anything to do with door knocking? 
Mm, I feel like I remember seeing I think this thumbnail. It was like a combination of like s- sketchy guys in their in their in their right. neighborhood, and then there was dust markings underneath the and uh, that was on the news, the doormats. Okay, and people thought we were marking their houses um, <laughs> to like come back. It's like we were saying this is pest control free, <laughs> but again, so if you if you are entertaining that route, or if you are a door-to-door rep who thinks, oh, well, I sold 500 counts. I can go and start my company. The reason that I thought Green Mango was a cluster 14 years ago is that you were playing sales manager, tech manager, CSR manager, billing manager, um, chemical. Like You were doing 15 roles. And so the training was super brief. However, when, when I went to go sell for a more established company, Doing it isolated to itself, you have to understand you're going to be competing with multi hundred million dollar companies who are able to forego cash flow for two or three years because they already have the cash from playing the long game of, you know, five to 10 years. I was just going to add one of the benefits because, you know, you're going hard on the negatives. (laughs) One of the benefits, right, is that part of our model when we go into a new market is turn on the door to door for two to three years right and try and get like an establishment in the area it's a really good like shot in the arm of new customers right. they're not the best customers but it's it's in a area that you know if you did a google google ads right. who knows where those people are coming for yeah you can target zip codes but with door knocking, you can literally be like, "Hey, we're only we're only focusing on this area." Yeah, of, we have you two know. customers on the street, so knock on that street. Yep. Well, and that's why I was going to say the second part is that where we could benefit right now, Green Mango, Arizona, and where the only reason why I've been enticed to maybe get a couple is like filling those pockets of yeah. the valley where we're not strong, and because of that, our route de- our route density isn't as strong, so our drive time is higher. That's where it'd be a benefit. Um, to, to have door knockers for sure. And th- this isn't what the topic or the podcast is about, but I'd also say that the, the reputation is there and the brand is established that you could probably argue that you don't need as skilled and efficient salespeople because the likelihood of anyone knocking on a door and seeing a Green Mango rep and knowing them is, is going to be extremely high. Right. So you can say, hey, look, you can go roll the dice with some random company that set up shop in a new city. No one's going to know who you are. They're going to they're going to Yelp, you know, Google look at the company and they probably have two to three stars just because that's that's another thing, too. Maybe a negative thing. I feel like a lot of these door to door companies that have the service side, they get torn apart just because of the negative experiences that people have with their door knockers. Oh yeah. So they go to Yelp and say, this guy sucked and has nothing to do with the service. Right. And they, they just destroy the online presence. And so it's not that I'm trying to be negative. I'm just, I'm just trying to say that if you're an owner operator, you, you should get out there and you should knock doors because, and then don't pay yourself. But then two, I thought you were, I was like, really, right now? (laughs) But two is if you are doing door-to-door or want to do door-to-door, I understand that there's probably like some unknown variables, but you could literally start spending $10 a day on Facebook, $20 a day on Facebook for ads and roll the dice getting two to five leads per day and, and closing one to two versus going out and knocking for four to six hours and maybe getting, you know, one to two or whatever. Yeah. Well, let's jump to the next forms of marketing then. And and you kept yeah. Mark uh, talking about call to action. And so there's a lot of different business owners that reach out to us that, you know, run the gamut of what they offer. Right. And, you know, we've had a lot of success on radio. And so a lot of people ask me how, you know, how is radio? We see you do billboard. How's the billboard? And w- one of my things that's consistent across the board is that, green mango and coconut and pineapple agave yes but black hat our security company didn't have is that call to action so the benefit of green mango is that people only call after they see that cockroach or that cricket right. three or four times that week sometimes it could be five or six times but nonetheless like if people don't have pest control that cricket's going to keep showing up if someone gets a stain on their couch or a stain in the carpet like they might walk past that stain four or five times but it's there every single day 
alarms in order for someone to have a strong call to action. Like they literally had to have someone break into their house. How often does that happen? You know, hardly right. ever. So it was really hard to, you know, we could do all we want with marketing, with radio, with Google, anything, even door knockers. But until people have that, like that fearful activity happen, they're just not going to get pushed over the edge. Right. Pools was awesome because their pool would literally turn green and they would look at it every single day. And so I think if you're a business owner out there wondering, okay, you know, you have to ask, what is my call to action? And you, for those companies like alarms that aren't like in your face every single day, yeah. you need to be spending the money on to, to rank high. Cause then when something happens, it's like a flood, right? Our restoration buddies, right. When people have a flood, they're calling their insurance agent or they're getting on Google and typing, you know, flood in, in Queen Creek or Gilbert or whatever. You have to populate at the top if you right. want that call. They're not going to remember, right. you know, the billboard that they saw. They're not going to remember, you know, a buddy talking about their experience. They're going to be there. So unless you're at the top. And so you need to really understand who you are as a business and then say, OK, you know, where do I where do I put that money? Because we have the benefit again they might see that stain on the carpet. <laughs> well, then they're going to get on Instagram. They're going to get on the radio. They're going to get, you know, drive down the road before maybe they have a call to action. One of those three things is going to push them over the edge right. of actually calling in, but right. it's going to be in their face every day until that. Right. So understand this in any area of, of trying to get new customers, some of your best customers are going to come from referrals, right? People that have experienced your service and believe in it and they are raving fans and they then they refer their neighbor their friend because people feel that group pressure of like well i can't cancel with green mango because my neighbor got me on it and the guy does our houses like right next to each other at the same time so uh there's there's a broad spectrum of what's the largest amount of exposure to the quickest call to action and generally they differ in price and they differ in what you can expect. And so if you want to advertise at your local sports, you know, team arena, go for it. But that's a long play. Mm -hmm. But you want to try to get as close to, you know, almost zero dollars to acquire the customer at the highest volume. And that generally is going to come through referrals. One thing I do not understand about Green Mango, but I do and I don't, you guys crush you or referrals. Like I guess the reason I say I don't is that we do the same thing. We literally have the same offer for our customers that you guys do for referring, mm -hmm. but you guys kill it in referrals. And I think you said for probably four or five years, it was top three sources. I mean, for 12 years, besides last year, before we actually started spending more money on Google. Right. And so, that's the thing. Yeah. If you're going to go spend money on door knockers, on Google, on Facebook, all these higher ticket items, like make sure you have an amazing referral program yeah. in place that's what, so that you can drive that cost down. Yeah. The more you can learn. I, you know what I think it is the difference though, like between Green Mango and Coconut? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I teed myself up for that. I think, I think pest control is such a strong topic in Arizona, especially as it starts to heat up. Like people just start, like they just scorpions, know. Scorpions. Like, hey, scorpions are coming. Roaches are coming. Crickets are coming and Everyone has them. And if you have them, like you're talking about it with your friends. Not, like Here I am. Germs are a, coming. We did a campaign about this and I thought it was awesome. Is like it's it's embarrassing to talk about your stains. It's embarrassing to talk about how your dog pees on your carpet. So there's not very many friends and family like really talking about that. Right. Like you don't go over to your friend's house and be like, dude, you know, so and so pooed on my carpet today <laughs> or peed on my 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 bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I think I, that's I, the difference. So how do you get people talking about coconut? I don't know. Yeah. And that, I, I think that that's where I always like hats off to you guys. But I think you hit the nail on the head that regardless of where you choose to market, you're going to have an established acquisition cost after a few months. And so you have to ask yourself, what is my desired acquisition cost and how can you reduce it? And that's increase the volume of customers that come from a specific silo or if there is a specific promotion that you can couple with a good referral program and say, hey, you know, you get your technicians bought into the referral program, you get your office bought into it. So 
as you pay X amount for Facebook ads and then someone calls in for Facebook ads to take a promotion and then your office is like, and don't forget that you can get this cleaning for free if you refer two friends before your cleaning. Now they're like, okay, cool. So if you paid 600 bucks in Facebook ads and got two customers, there's your, 600, there's your $300 in acquisition cost. But then if you look at the total volume of customers that you get and from those Facebook guys, they get four more customers because of your team being bought in, like your acquisition cost just drops significantly. And so before you go start a door to door and before you go buy a billboard or partner with the D backs, just take a look at your desired acquisition cost. How long can you go before you need to cash flow? And that's, I guess that's why I'm so sensitive. I to think it. what I hear you saying is like, make sure you have it mapped out to where if you do go spend this, you know, high acquisition cost on a Diamondbacks promotion or a billboard. Just make sure when those when those other when those people come in, like you have two or three ways to upsell Correct. them, get a referral, Correct. and then have a drip campaign to upsell, and then make sure you're retargeting them on on anything else. Like Correct. get you get four or five touch points out of that customer, squeeze it for all it's worth. And I think that's the mistake that we've made that we're still making and that a lot of people are making from the elementary level of not even having a referral program in place is that like you got to be thinking three, four, five steps ahead of like the touch points with that customer and how you're going to capitalize with them yeah. on them. Spot on. Yeah. That, and that's why I said that. <laughs> and that's why I said this thing. 